Before we continue, I wanted to take a short interlude to talk about ethics. Now, as you may have noticed, the viola and Joan's um, little face detector I put up at the beginning, that was actually kind of a useful weak classifier for faces of people with light skin, okay? But it may not work so well with people who have darker skin. So I wanna talk about something that um, is kind of more relevant than sort of just facial detection, which is facial recognition. So facial recognition has arguments on both sides that are very powerful. So I wanted to kind of go through some of those with you. All right, so why is it useful? Why is it harmful? Let's discuss both sides of the coin. Well, the reason it's useful is for security. And uh, I've given a whole list here. For instance, um, school shootings. Like there's a, there's a school district in New York State that tried to implement facial recognition to help prevent people who are known to be dangerous from entering schools. Uh, and this is, this is particularly helpful if we allow um, you know, people, anyone, even mentally ill people, if we allow them to have guns, then it would be useful to be able to prevent them from entering the school with, with such a gun. And you know, something like facial recognition, it's a simple technology that might be able to help, right? Uh, kidnappings. Um, for instance, you know, you, if you have a picture of someone who is a kidnapper and you want to be able to determine immediately who they are, so that um, you can prevent anything bad from hap further bad from happening to the person that they kidnapped, right? Also, violent crime. Uh, here's an example where facial recognition technology led cops to an alleged rapist in under 24 hours. This is really, really impressive. Also, things like terrorist attacks. We've had multiple attacks in this country where we've had a picture of the person and we needed to identify who it was. Public event security. Um, Taylor Swift actually uses facial recognition to identify her no if her known stalkers come through the gates of her, uh, of her concerts. And then um, also unlocking your phone, right? You use, you, you have, your phone knows who you are and it won't unlock for anyone else if you have facial recognition technology incorporated into the phone. Okay, so why is it harmful? Well, I think the key reason is actually data because in order to do facial recognition, you need a database of people's faces and you need their names attached to that. And this is biometric data. Like how would you feel if anybody in the world had a database of like your fingerprint and like your name? Well, this is now your face and your name, right? These are biometrics. These are things that you can't change about yourself. And if people keep these databases of biometrics and they as actually, if the database gets leaked somewhere, then that database can do irreparable damage to whoever is, um, whoever's face was in that database, right? So um, we have to be very, very careful about um, biometrics. And unfortunately, in this, in this country, um, our privacy laws about biometrics are really like non-existent. And, and it's, it's just pretty scary that, you know, it's, it's almost like anyone can do irreparable damage um, given the, the state of our current biometrics laws. So I think this is a key reason why, um, why people hesitate on face recognition, right? You don't know if um, the school, uh, it, it has these, this database of students with their names attached to them, then you know, what if somebody sells that data set to a company, right? That data is gone and the students didn't give permission for their, their information to be sold, right? So this can all be controlled through laws, but currently um, it's not, not clear that it has been. In fact, it hasn't been. Okay, so another uh, criticism of facial recognition technology is that it's not always accurate. And in fact, the accuracy varies by race. Um, but I should say that this is getting better. So the kind of the better facial recognition technologies um, can really identify people regardless of race. They can identify pretty well. And this is just a database issue where um, that, you know, if, if the database only has white people in it, then it can only identify white people. What do you expect, right? So, um, but right now there are some technologies that, uh, that don't do so well in terms of people who have black and brown faces. Um, so let me give you an example. The first uh, black man was wrongfully arrested because of incorrect facial recognition, but this was a disaster all the way around. So here the police, like they ran a grainy photo through face recognition and found this guy. He didn't really look like the guy in the grainy security footage. They brought him in and he said, hey, I don't look like this guy in the picture. And the, the, the police looked at it and they said, yeah, you know, he doesn't look like that guy. But it's like, why didn't you look 
the first of all, the police shouldn't have brought him in without actually checking that. That's ridiculous. And then also, um, once this guy pointed out that he wasn't the guy in, in the video, the police should have let him go. But they didn't. They actually kept, they held him for like a huge number of hours. And it was only after this made the news that, that you know, I was like, come on, you guys, you've got to let him go. So there were some just bad actions there that wouldn't have been done with competent um, police officers. Okay, and another reason why um, why this is harmful, uh, why this technology can be harmful is for bullying. And uh, so sort of uh, the government of China are experts in doing this. And there, were, there are examples here of how if you walk outside in your pajamas, your picture and your name gets posted on a bulletin board saying, hey, you really should dress, this person didn't dress well today. And um, yeah, that's a, that's a totally other level of, <laughs> of where this technology can go. And so I wanted to leave you, um, oh yes, and then um, as I mentioned this, that these face detectors of Viola and Jones, they don't work for people of, of, of all different colors. Um, I, should, I should mention that it's partly due to the cameras, like the cameras in, in this country, a lot of them are not even tuned to, to sort of, uh, they're not even tuned for darker faces. And so changing the cameras and what, in, and the way we actually take pictures actually would would significantly help in our ability to do this kind of to do this kind of detection. But I want to point this out that um, that you know there, there's very good reasons why uh, this technology doesn't work as well for people with different skin colors. It's you know the combination of the training data and the quality of the cameras, right? The tuning of the cameras. Okay, so I want to leave you with some questions that you can think about which is that, you know, can we have our cake and eat it too, right? Can we make our schools safe? Can we invent facial recognition technology for safe use at schools that wouldn't require keeping a database of biometrics of the students, right? Um, so what protections, what legal protections could you envision for facial data and other biometrics that might be, that might prevent that, these databases from being collected and distributed or collected and being hacked? and thus distributed. And then finally, how could the biometric data with these legal protections be used for security? So how can we combine the laws and the technology to safely protect our schools and safely um, detect terrorists and all of the other things we want to do with this technology to keep us safe? All right, thanks. <laughs>